Hi everyone and welcome back and in this video we are going to explore more about this map box because what happens is uh, what happens in the Swiggy and Uber Eats is let's say you place the order now we already have a coordinates about the restaurant about the user who placed the order so they obviously use the smartest algorithm to just draw the path so that the delivery partner can follow that obviously with the short amount of time i cannot uh, build something for you but i can at least place this map box uh, map once the payment is done uh, item is confirmed and you start tracking the application right you start tracking the order so what do we have i mean i didn't place the correct coordinates for the restaurant and for the user but once you have a coordinates and once you have a proper address you can actually show that correctly onto the map and that's important because once you place the order, you have a source coordinate, destination coordinate or source address and destination address. We already populating the restaurant address. We already populating the user address, user address ID, user address object, the restaurant object and restaurant ID. So in the order, we already have all the information needed to track the order. So I'm just playing with this map box. Uh, so it's just like we just need to add a map box CL. And there are some keys also you need to get so i created this track route so that when you hit each track you should be able to land to this particular page so i'm just still exploring because i have used a different map uh, mostly with the google maps Mapbox is also very popular library it needs this access token and the clients at public access token to start uh, showing you things based on based on your coordinate, based on your uh, particular place search and all because you need to center the map to particular latitude and longitude and based on that it will show you the map so there are lots of utilities and the APIs and different type of implementations available for this which we can use so um, initially I'm just playing with this how it really works so you just need to initialize the map box CL and then you need to style center let and lot latitude and longitude and what a kind of styling you wanted to use all those things we were trying to do and then I was just looking for any existing sample examples to really do this thing by centering the coordinates which uh, I am passing for the restaurant is it possible to have it something like this so it's a little tricky to centralize the map to your coordinates which you are providing on the fly because you have to reinitialize then I got this uh, nice and clean blog which is talking about okay how to initialize the map box ZL. This is the, the map box token you need to pass, the styling and then centralize coordinates, latitude and longitude. I created my account without any delay. I already have my account so I just doing a sign in with that account and then I did reset uh, blah 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 which you can also do by yourself. And here I come here. We can create an application in the Mapbox dashboard and here it will give you the default public token and the private token. And you put that default public token in your ENV of the create react app. React app public app token and just pass this. I think SK it should be PK that I will correct. I think it should be so when I pass SK and try to use this application. So we can start the application from each. So I'm starting the create react app. And okay, this is not working. What it is saying is undefined of zero. Let's try to see what is the problem. Use a public access token P with the PK. So here, this is what I got. So let me replace this with the public access token, which is PK dot something. So not sure what is happening, but I don't, I'm not getting any error, but the map is also not being shown. Maybe the width and height is not correct. I don't see an error regarding the map rendering. Then it may be because sometimes it happens is when you, okay, it appears. So that was the problem with the height and width. I was not passing. I mean, height and width, 100% of what? So that was the problem. So here I just converted 
this into the pixels and it starts populating so based on the central coordinates now this is how the map box g looks like i mean the initialization and using this is really nice and simple and this is my country okay so what we can do is we can simply simply see this is the home component top section so i can also try to decorate this particular thing with some top content and then there is some body something like that so it doesn't look uh, complete empty and then in the body sections we can split into left and right left contains the order informations delivery partner informations address we have selected the the restaurant address and then we can also show some markers on the map so that's a because we have a lat and long for that we need to have a correct latitude and longitude at least instead of showing the navigation path between the source and target the the delivery guy and the, the address of the user we can at least show these two markers on the map and we already have a latitude and longitude and we can use these markers api from the map box gl okay show the custom markers which will tell you okay this is the restaurant address the restaurant from which the pickup will happen and this is the delivery address where the, where the delivery will happen so i'm just adding some custom banners on the top and then i'm just dividing this section into two parts one is the address part and another is the map box part so here i divided into 20 60 to 40 percent 60 percent is the order detail and then 40 percent is the map box so we can reduce it maybe a 20 percent to the first box and then the remaining is the map right so this is the map we are displaying i need to limit the width because it is stretching to the right if i remove this height and width this is getting removed so a little bit less width and height we can provide so that we can adjust it and here is the left part is the order address detail now you already know what items are in the cart what is the order detail what is selected uh, restaurant what are the menu item uh, like uh, and whom you are delivering to all this information we already have maybe if you want we can show that in the left sections okay what is the selected restaurant what are the menu items what is the, the address to which we are going to deliver okay now uh, we will just style uh, a map a little bit so here in the left section we can just put uh, the information about the the address selected address selected order the restaurant and the menu item and in the right hand side we can start uh, trying to show this map a little bit so in the map we can show the source and target coordinates right so this is how we have divided this the 60 percent will be uh, having the content information about the, the order the restaurant and all and the rest we are going to have a map and here we are going to introduce another field payment status one is a status in the order service and is the payment status so payment status is like okay payment status is confirmed success uh, or a failure but the order status is like initiated payment processed um, in delivery or delivered all these kind of order status like what is the that order completed payment status will be success and failure which can maintain in the order entity also because order we are creating just after the the payment is getting successful right so if uh, order status so here we are confirming the order so once the order is confirmed we need to trigger the events also so if uh, query dot status equal equal to success then status dot success then we will just mark this as another string which is payment confirmed payment uh, processed or, or uh, payment failed this is just like order status we can maintain in the order entity so it will have a two attributes now one is the payment status another is the order status so initially when we are creating the order we can just say payment status in progress order status initiated now once you get a confirmation from the stripe you can uh, trigger another event confirm order and you can confirm the order with the data so here uh, what we are going to do so let's say when you are going to the landing page on the checkout we need to fetch your latest processed order on which the payment was processed i mean the payment was successful or 
something is in the delivery because let's say you have done the payment how do you and uh, how do you know how do we fetch the latest active uh, order for which the payment has been processed we have to fetch it right so we, we will fetch the latest order for which the payment is processed because because we need to do the tracking tracking okay what is the source address what is the target and how much time it will take who is the delivery partner all sort of things we need to show on the ui and we also need to track okay if there is any active uh, payment processed order is there uh, for this user account or not we need to keep showing it right so we have a gate gate latest uh, processed order that you can fetch from the from the our apis so this is the order controller and from order controller we will fetch and we will get show this data because this data is required on the ui side so how do we show the latest order order contains the address id address restaurant restaurant, restaurant menu items and all here we will just create another order order slice order slice will fetch the latest order and maybe the order history and all so it's just like another slice we will just copy things from the cart slice and we will create a clone of it because uh, in the order what we are fetching we are fetching the latest order and we are populating that inside the order state okay we will just remove the non required things from here this is a simple order slice we have so state dot order dot order that will give us the required data and here we are doing page latest order so API we order service order so it is a get call get call if you are getting the order right so it will always give you the latest order if you want to get the history then you can see latest orders or some other API call which will give you all the orders has been placed with this user session because what we are doing is we are going to do uh, based on user ID and based on the status this will be two parameters to fetch the latest order we have to fetch the order submitted by the current logged in user where the status is the payment processed not just a single where clause okay so here we are just going to add another order reducer so that order data starts coming in the redux state and we can just show that on the application it's order item always remember to change these things because if this is duplicate the order won't uh, state won't be populated so it's active order this is the current state we have that will be populated and here you can see in the tracking page in the tracking page we have to do lots of things first of all we have to get the current user session so we can get it from the context auth right from a use context then we can do a dispatch and using dispatch you can fetch the order items all the latest orders once you have the user session you display okay this is the current logged in user this is your the whole address selected address also and then this is your this is your order menu item right which you will get from the order data order data contains lots of things it contains your selected address it contains your menu item restaurant id restaurant information that we have to show on the application so this is the same order slice from there we are getting all the data and we can just show what data we are getting when you reload the page we should be able to make one api called order that should give you the all the information i think we are getting empty object because currently there is no such order where the payment process is done right so that's why it will just give you the empty object and uh, we are getting empty object so what we can do is either we can manually update the database or we can just do one we can place one order where the order status will become or a payment processed so here uh, we are starting this application again this is the cart and this is the order entity okay now you can see this is the parameter so i think there is a small bug uh, now i think this is clear here you can see get process order here i'm checking with the two parameters user id and the order status so whatever the current logged in user is it for that only i'm just getting the payment processed uh, latest order so that will return it to us it's a initially object because it's going to return you only single single order at a time right so here i will just do a order api import the, the order database
each order and inside order do we we have this uh, collection and these are the orders so order status we can just change for one of that so i deleted the whole data because that's not we are going to play with here now we are going to play with the placing the order and checking everything session is okay we have added some items into the cart we are doing checkout selecting address and then making the payment so it should create a payment record and the order record with the status payment processed if the if the payment is successful here you can see this is the order right and now if i go this is the response payment processed right so when i go to the checkout or when i go to the cart it should trigger this api call of cart order and you can see here is my order right give me the latest order where the order status is payment processed so i have everything because in order history this is what i'm going to feed to the delivery partner the address selected address menu items and restaurant informations which contains a let long of a restaurant let let long of the the user with the mobile number and all sort of things so now we have the whole data now we just need to display that on the ui so what we can do is we can just tweak the ui a little bit and we can start showing this okay what is the selected address selected restaurant name restaurant description and all the basic information about the restaurant and then <coughs> delivery partner address right so that is coming from the address object we have a city state let long and all those properties so we can just customize this ui a little bit so it looks nicer so that i will just skip because it's not nothing important just displaying us some information about the selected user and uh, your address which we are fetching okay now in the next thing is uh, we can also try to centralize this map box uh, with the coordinate which is there based of a user or the restaurant because in the restaurant also we are getting this latitude and longitude right and the only thing which we need to do is in reinitialize the map box after initial rendering based on the lat long we are passing because map box is taking the uh, center coordinate which is the latitude and the longitude right so this is the lat long we are passing so we can check the coordinates what the coordinates are being passed because initially this data will be null that's why it was failing and these are the central coordinates which we need to pass so we just need to be careful like uh, what values we are passing because initially this can be null also so yeah this is rendering now that depends on what coordinates i have passed in the data so i can just fix that data by getting the coordinates of my central location and then it will should, should be able to render something on the map okay so that's it uh, what we are going to do next is uh, we are going to trigger the event let's let's say the order is processed right order is processed means payment is done what should happen with the delivery right we need to tell some service okay now this is the order id this is the the restaurant and this is the all information and assign the delivery partner for it so we are going to create a nest js microservice micro it's not a rocket science it's just like a simple service which is listening for the events and nest js provides uh, these kind of microservices which can listen to these events asynchronously that can be built either using kafka rabbitmq redis and all these are asynchronous microservices so first the event posted to the rabbitmq and then there is a listener service which will listen to the particular messages coming from the events i mean particular queue like rabbitmq or kafka 